like to welcome everyone to the Pike Polaria Family YMCA. We're so excited to see all your faces in person that we have got through this crazy year and we can celebrate this achievement in person with our ribbon cutting today. I'm going to turn the floor over to Jerry Kane. He's our chairman of the board of directors here at the YMCA. Thank you, Shelly. Welcome. This is a dream come true. The YMCA has core values of honesty, respect, caring, and responsibility. But the number one thing that we do is rely on God the Father. So with that, Dave Hammond will give the invocation. Dave is a member of our board. Thank you, Jerry. Sorry. I wish I would have dressed better, but I thought we were going to swim. <laughs> so, but let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you glory for this great day. Ribbon cutting uh, on a tremendous facility that will be a blessing to so many people. We're thankful to all those who gave and had the heart to give, who had a vision to see this come true. And today it has. We thank you for all those who have given toward this. We know they will be blessed. And we just give you the praise and honor for the great things you're doing at the Y and for the swimming pool. And just use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Looking around the room, we've got some key people here. Two people who are primarily responsible for the YMCA when it got started are not here right now. Bruce Elliott and Brant Mullins. They have been tremendous leaders in the success of our YMCA. We have other early board members here and we have dignitaries here. Looking around the room, if you would, raise your hand, Andy Hatton, Phil Belswick, Commissioner Hartsock, Senator Wheeler, Eric Wirth on the board of our Y, and I'll go for Rotary, Greg, Community Trust Bank, Dr. Sachdeva, Charles Baird, the Elliots, raise your hand, all the Elliots. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, Danny Rohr. Actually, yeah. Lateral. And of course, our wonderful past governor and current Pikeville resident and fantastic supporter of our entire state. Let's welcome everybody here. So, if you're a board member, raise your hand. Okay, we welcome each board member. We have donors. If you have donated to our YMCA at any time, raise your hand. How many that did not donate would like to raise your hand? <laughs> We have some tremendous people that have really supported the YMCA. We have a history here at the Y. I just want to go through it. In 1983, we started the Railroad YMCA up at Shelby Anna. In 1985, we moved to Pikeville and had the Athletic Center at the Hambly Center. We also moved to Daniel Boone about that time. In 1995, we began construction on the facility here that we had two gyms, two racquetball courts, a walking track, child watch, weight room, a lobby, and four offices. In 2003, we increased the facility with additions that included a weight room, cardio room, and multi-purpose room. In 2007, another expansion was completed where we added a child care area, an additional cardio, air, cardio area, and extended the lobby room. The current facility that we're adding now is the Wellness and Aquatic Center. The Wellness and Aquatic Center, the first meeting that we had 
Philip Ellswick, August 25th, 2017, you and I got together to talk about an aquatic center. We then did a market feasibility study. We did a ge geotech study where we drilled holes down in the ground to see if this film material would handle the aquatic center. We did material testing with jigsaw, digging up some of the materials for compaction. We got state approvals. Summon Engineering did the drawings and the revisions. Kevin Gillum, Summon Engineering, would you raise your hand? Did we not meet about 30 or 40 times? At least. At least. We received a city commitment for $1.5 million. We got donation commitments, and some of them were anonymous. We got $3,375,000 in financing lined up with FAHI and Community Ventures. Elliott Contracting did the construction and completed it by Memorial Day 2020. Harold Bram was the project completion manager at that time. In December of 2020, after some hiccups in financing, Rusty Davis, Ryan Stratton, and Wayne Hancock worked out the details in the mortgage financing on this facility. We formed a partnership with UPike on the aquatics director. The result is this. We have a first class aquatic and wellness center. We have an awesome, fantastic, and beautiful facility addition. We have a 25 yard college length pool, seven feet deep, three and a half feet deep on the shallow end, and it met all state requirements. We have a wood ceiling out there to absorb sound, and Paddock Pools has a patented chlorine absorption system that they patented and takes the chlorine out to keep the smell down. We have men's, women's, and special needs locker rooms. We have a weight room expansion, and we have a splice pad under construction which is being donated by the Elliott Company. So let's give the Elliott Company a round of applause. <laughs> it's been a dream come true. All here are showing their support for the mission of the YMCA. Our features are Honesty, respect, caring, and responsibility. With that, I thank you for the opportunity to have served you along with other chairmen, Denny Rohr, prior to me when this facility was constructed, and now myself for 23 years in a row. I thank you for the opportunity to serve our fantastic community. Thank you. now for some people to give some comments. The city of Pikeville, represented by Philip Ellswick. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Four years ago, I didn't realize it had been that long, but I guess it has. Uh, an opportunity came about for the city to uh, build a new pool. And uh, Jerry approached us right after that news came out and wanted to build an indoor facility. Uh, the city was happy to partner to do that with the Y. It was very important to us that everyone in our community have access to that during certain times of the year and at reasonable rates as we've always had in the city. We managed to achieve all those goals and, and partnered. And we have a fantastic facility unlike anything else in the region. Uh, it's opened so many new opportunities for people in our community and we're just thankful to be part of it. Would you want to say a few words for us, please? Welcome, Paul. Let me just congratulate the board and you, especially Jerry, for the work that you've done on this organization for the last 20 years or so. I know it's been your major philanthropic community effort, and you've provided excellent leadership. And this is absolutely fabulous. I, 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 there's not another town of 7,000 people in Kentucky that's got a facility like this. There's probably not a town twice our size that's got a facility like this. 
probably not a town of 3 towns our size. It is really a unique facility, the whole facility, and uh, uh, it's something that you all need to be proud of, and we need to keep, keep working. You know, this, this community is phenomenal. Last uh, weekend, uh, Judy's the chairman of the Tourism Commission, and they had a, they had a bus load of 28 people from near Cleveland, or 38 people from near Cleveland, that were just, they, they were on a, a blind trip. They didn't know where they were going to end up. And when they, they got here in Eastern Kentucky, we had dinner with them, I guess, Thursday night. Uh, they were just astonished. And you know, that's just about what happens to everybody. They get to Pikeville first for the first time. It's unique, but it's not an accident. It's a product of visionary leadership going back 40 years, I guess. And we've still got it today. And that's what we all as a community need to do. You not only have to select visionary capable leaders, but you have to support them. And uh, uh, Jerry, we're going to provide you a little more support for this uh, facility. And I hope that the whole, whole community will. So again, I just think that everybody involved ought to be very proud of what has been accomplished and uh, make sure that we don't take it for granted. Let's continue to look to the future. Strive for high things. You'll make them sometime. So congratulations. Thank you, Bob. This facility was constructed under tremendous leadership and care. The Elliott companies did it. Harold Brand was up here, I think, nearly every day that we began with the Elliott companies. But Dick Jarvis and Todd Brand and his family are here, and Harold is going to say a few words on behalf of the Elliott companies. Harold, please join me in welcoming Harold. Thank you, Chair. Uh, one thing I'd like to comment on is Jerry mentioned earlier in his conversation that uh, T. Bruce Elliott or Thomas Bruce Elliott was instrumental, one of the people was instrumental in the YMCA coming to this area. And Bruce really believed in YMCA and he got, I think, all of us that worked with him uh, kind of oriented to the YMCA. And, uh, and uh, as Jerry says, we built the first building. Uh, we, had, we did all the additions on the building. And you know, we want to thank the YMCA for having faith in our company to be able to uh, perform construction work for them. Uh, it's been, uh, been a pleasure of mine to be able to work with the different people in the YMCA. Served as a board member after Bruce Elliott died. Uh, and one of the first things I remember, hadn't been a board member very long to uh, Jerry called a long range planning committee. And the thing we started talking about back in the 90s was uh, swimming pool. You know, I thought at that time that swimming pool was probably remote possibility for this YMCA, but thanks to the city stepping up and uh, last, uh, you know, several years ago, four years, I believe, the, as Jerry said, here it is today. It's, it's accomplished. So we need to be mindful that all it takes is a dream and a vision. And Jerry and the leadership of the YMCA had that dream and vision. And I'm very appreciative uh, for that, for this community. And Jerry has talked a little bit about the uh, why, about the uh, pool and the things in the pool, and he's right on. It has a state-of-the-art uh, uh, ventilation system uh, that hopefully, if it works properly, and I think it has been working properly, keeps the chlorine level down in the pool, the smell in the pool. You, know, you can't get rid of all of it, but basically how that system works if you'll notice when you go out, there is a uh, drain, a perimeter drain all the way around the pool. There is an evacuation system sitting outside, very sophisticated evacu evacuation and fresh air system that continuously pulls air through that drainage system, expels it outside, and brings back in fresh air. That piece of equipment is very expensive. It's uh, very effective in what it does. It heats the building, it cools the building, takes care of the pool. Uh, so you'll see that as we go out, it'll be easy to recognize that drain because most pools you see does not have 
water flowing over the edge all the way around the pool uh, like this one does. So, uh, but uh, I'm very appreciative and I think we're uh, happy that the YMCA chose us as a construction manager for this project. We worked a lot with the engineers and uh, architectural firm to uh, uh, try to design and, and do things in this building that would make it very effective, very cost effective. We, uh, we, sir, we did a lot of direct purchases with the YMCA where they bought the materials. The materials, uh, the tax savings that we had on the materials actually allowed us to install the wood ceiling that you'll see out there, which made this a much more better building. Uh, I think it helped with the uh, acoustics of the building and it really looks good and you know we thank the engineers and architects for working with us as we made that change in the, in the work as we went along and you know, I retired in February of uh, 2020 as COVID was starting little did I know that that keep me at home all the time instead of being able to do other things but uh, I stayed on board with the Elliot's uh, till we did finish the job it was my last uh, construction project that I helped oversee and then we uh, kind of turned things over as, as Dick mentioned. My son Todd, is uh, he's uh, working with uh, the Elliott Company now and Dick Jarvis who uh, has been with the company nearly as long as I was. I was there 48 years so uh, I was involved with everything that we did with the YMCA so I appreciate uh, being able to speak today, opportunity to thank the architects, the consultants, the different consultants for working with us on this project and you know it turned out uh, I think very well. I do want to say something about the uh, splash pad. One of the things we talked about early before I quit was trying to do something in memory and in honor of uh, Thomas Bruce Elliott because he worked so hard on the YMCA to help get it here and work with us through the different building things that he was involved in when he was alive and uh, we wanted to donate that to the Y. We felt like that uh, it was one of the things that would really make this facility a profitable experience for the Y, and hopefully that will be finished soon. I understand there's some inspections and things from the state that's kind of holding the situation up, but uh, the work's mostly done. I wish everybody could see what is done, but according to uh, construction ethics, we got to kind of keep it, people out of it right now. So I thank everybody for... Uh, being here today and helping celebrate this uh, uh, great occasion of this of this pool facility. I just got a text from Philip Wheeler that he's got to cut out. <laughs> so Philip, come say just a short uh, conversation here and how proud of you are of this YMCA. Well, I'm very proud of this YMCA and I'm very pr proud of Jerry and the board for doing such a wonderful job. I promise I'd much rather stay here with you guys, but I got to run to a dentist appointment. So I mean, <laughs> but uh, it, this is a wonderful project. I don't think we could ask for any finer facility for any community in this great Commonwealth. Uh, I'm so proud of my hometown and its leaders and, and, the, and the community leaders here that have donated so much of their time, so much of their money. And, and so much of their really blood, toil, sweat, and tears into this facility. And uh, I want to uh, commend Jerry again, particularly for his leadership. I think that there's no one out there that's more dedicated to this YMCA. You know, we politicians generally, we're the ones coming around asking for, for money, but Jerry called me up on the phone, Phil, I've got a favor to ask. <laughs> and you know, and when Jerry asks for a favor, he doesn't let up. And, <laughs> But I, I, I am proud not only to support it as this uh, region state senator to also be a donor. And uh, I, I just to see when your, your, your money goes to a facility like this just makes it all worthwhile. So Jerry, thank you so much for your efforts and thank everybody here for all the work that they've done. Thank you. Philip, before you go, would you like to donate again for this year? <laughs> okay. Get back to you. All right. All right. We have a tremendous person here. Burton Webb is the president and leader of the fantastic organization of the University of Pikeville.
Would you come and say a few words to Bert? I assume we're using a microphone because it's recorded because it feels like a small space. But uh, yeah, happy to be here. I'm sorry that I was just a few minutes late. You saw us pull in a little bit late. We were actually down at UVA Wise. We discovered that at UVA Wise, they're not allowed by the Commonwealth of Virginia to have graduate programs. So we thought we should probably go down and try to recruit graduate students to come to Pikeville, which they were very interested in. So that's a good thing. Put that on your prayer list. Um, we're really happy to be here today in partnership with the Y, and, and I have to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, you know, when Jerry first approached me about this, I have to say, Jerry, I was one of the skeptics. You probably remember that. <laughs> I don't know, but, but within six months of seeing this man's persistence and his dedication to this project, I was pretty sure that it was going to move forward, and my skepticism changed from skepticism to support and then commitment because the university agreed to commit to partner with them to hire an aquatics director so that we could have a swimming team and a swim coach and an aquatics director. And though the first one didn't work out, we're going to find us another one, aren't we? Yeah. And we're going to be able to move forward with that program. Uh, I have to say, though, that as I look around the room, I'm looking around the room carefully, I haven't seen very many of y'all in the pool. Uh, because my wife and I now come up three to four days a week and use this pool for at least an hour every day, three to four days a week. And it has been a fantastic asset to this community. Uh, so much so that I don't know if we could ever live anywhere again that doesn't have a pool like this because we just plugged it into the way we live our lives. Uh, I remember when I was a little kid learning how to swim at a YMCA. The only Y we had was about 40 minutes away from where we lived. We were in rural Michigan. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff really close by. But we drove into Flint because my mom didn't learn to swim when she was a kid, and she struggled with fear of water her entire life. She said, my children will not grow up that way. And she drove us to the Y, enrolled us in swim classes, and took us there every Saturday. Uh, and I went all the way through their program. Having said that, the first time I jumped into this pool, I nearly drowned because it had been 30 years. <laughs> I made it all the way to the other side of the pool, and the, the aquatics director came up to me and said, are you OK? And I said, it's been 30 years since I tried to swim across the pool. I just realized I don't have to sprint across it every time I go. Let me slow down. I think I'll be OK. And uh, I have been since. So Jerry, congratulations. YMCA board, I know you guys are here. Congratulations. It's great work. We're really pleased and proud to partner with you, and we hope for great days to come. Jerry. Angie Hatton, you are next. Thank you. Thanks so much. You know, in the past five years of serving as state representative for um, Letcher and, and Pike County and the downtown Pikeville area in particular, I have been struck again and again and again by how capable this community is of putting a project together and it may be huge and it may seem undoable, but there are people in this community who rather than say, you know, somebody should put a pool here, they think, you know, we, I, could help put a pool here. And it seems like the same faces I'm seeing again and again and again involved in all the good stuff, the city and the university and the county and, and always, always Governor Patton. And whenever something good is going on here, it's so nice to, to see, uh, see you, sir. And I'm very, very pleased for any part that I've had and can't wait to see how much the community enjoys this and really, really, once again, very proud of Pikeville. Thank you, Andy. It's all right. An organization that's been with the YMCA since its very beginning, even as a dream. Brant Mullins was the first chairman of the board of our YMCA. And since then, then Pikeville National Bank and now Community Trust has been tremendously supportive of the YMCA. And when we needed $3 million as interim financing, they stepped forward immediately and said, we'll do it. With that, Rick Newsom is going to speak for Community Trust Bank. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Jerry. I had no idea I was going to be speaking today, or I would have uh, 
I would have went out and rented a suit so I could look more appropriate. <laughs> or maybe run by instead of you call a funeral home and borrowed one, you know. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, I, I, I'm here and I am what I am today as far as the, my dress. But uh, uh, Brent Mullins, uh, a tremendous individual, Jerry's brought his name up <clears throat> a couple, three times. Uh, Brent was very special to me. I know James Brown's here, he remembers. Mr. Bones very well. Uh, I started in 1976, April the 24th. I'll never forget the day and the time and the place. And Brant interviewed me for a potential employee, as a potential employee, and uh, I was in such awe of him and his wisdom and his presence. And he didn't say many words, did he, Charles Baird? Didn't say a lot. But when he said something, he meant every word that he said. And uh, the one thing that I remember was he told me I had the job and I never did ask him what he was going to pay. I was afraid to, you know, <laughs> unlike today. But I was glad to have the job and, and graciously accepted it and, uh, and things uh, took off from there. I remember the, the inception uh, of the YMCA in 83. Uh, I was starting in a management position at that time. I remember Brent bringing this up. and what a great idea it was, and Brant was a great community uh, involved individual, <clears throat> and he believed in this. And when Brant believed in something, he got behind it, and he supported it, and our company, then known as Pikeville National Bank, supported it and has supported this organization the whole way, as I can remember, Jerry, the whole way, all the way through, and has been a supporter of this project, uh, both in uh, Employees, we want to thank, you know, Brett Keene serves on the board here. Wayne Hancock, I think I saw him a while ago. He's here somewhere. Is he here? I saw him. Thought it did. Anyway, Wayne Hancock, our legal counsel, is on the board here. So we've had people who put time and effort into this thing, and they believe in it as well, or they wouldn't be a part of it. Uh, personally, I believe in it, and I'm committed to this, this project here. I've already uh, demonstrated my commitment with... Uh, in a monetary way, and, and I believe in it wholeheartedly, and I think it's the greatest thing ever uh, for a community our size. And the governor stole my thought, but you know he's the guy. He 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 knew. <laughs> but a town this size, who has more than we do? I mean, a town of 7,000 people, ever how many people we have? Who has more amenities than we do? When you think about a YMCA, this aquatic center, and all the other things we have, the university and the medical school, and you know the optometry school and the hospital and the arena. We, we've got it all right here in Pikeville. It's an amazing thing. As far as the financing, the involvement we had, we certainly want to thank all those who were involved in that in our company. Um, it was the right thing to do at the, at the time, and, and it was the timing was right, and it was something we needed to do when we did it. And of course, we appreciate all those who were involved. We appreciate the construction company that jumped in, and we had 100 percent faith in, in this group here. Uh, and they did a phenomenal job as they always did and the architects and all those people that were involved, we appreciate that. But as a, as a bank, community trust bank, we are involved in this community. We're a partnership with a lot of great organizations, none better than the YMCA. And we appreciate what they're doing in the community. The Rotary Club of Pikeville has about 80 members, and we support the YMCA. And the current president of the Pikeville Rotary Club is Greg Dempsey. Welcome, Greg. Thank you. Uh, I feel a little inadequate with all the speakers that came before me. It's hard to beat Burton and Governor Patton. They make me feel so inadequate. <laughs> And like Rick, I was like, Jerry's like, you need to say a few words today. I'm like, awesome. Um, no, it's, uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's an honor to uh, help open this facility. It's, it is beyond impressive. Um, and the population keeps coming up. But it's just an awesome facility despite anything. A lot of places would love to have this. And I grew up on the outskirts of Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we were Y members. And I learned to swim at the YMCA, it's very important to me, it holds a special place. But Rotary um, is proud to be a partner with the YMCA. 
Um, we're proud to help with this facility. We're proud to donate to programs that they have. Um, they're getting ready to have a water safety program that we're a big part of, and it's phenomenal um, to, that the community and these kids can come here and learn these things, and uh, we look forward to continuing being a, a partner with the Pipe of YMCA. So thank you. Have a great day. Seems like Appalachian Wireless is involved in everything good going on anywhere around Eastern Kentucky. Ashley Literal is here. <laughs> Ashley, yes. say a few words. <laughs> Again, had no idea that was on the speaking agenda. <laughs> so uh, apologies for that as well. Uh, but, you know, Appalachian Wireless is a very community driven company. We One of the biggest misconceptions we fought for years is, is that. A lot of people still think we're this giant corporation and this and this all the donations and all the signs on fields and I, I, you would be hard pressed to find somewhere that Appalachian Wireless and Community Trust Bank and a lot of these other businesses based in this area don't have signage and shirts and everything that we can do to support um, community and it's all about local and keeping everything local and we're so proud to be a part of the community. Uh, I'm from Johnson County, so I'm a little envious of, of this facility. Uh, it's, that's the reason I came up, was uh, just very, very interested uh, to see what you guys have. And this place is just second to none. It's awesome. So really proud of you guys, and, and thanks, thanks for having me up, Jerry. I <laughs> Thank you. There's a law firm called Baird and Baird, and Baird and Baird, and Baird and Baird, and more Bairds. And we've got Rusty Davis, Ryan Stratton, and Charles Baird here. Would all three of you come up here, and I want one of you to say a few words. And Rusty, I want to personally thank you for all the hard work that you put forth in helping us close the mortgage loan on this facility. Let's give Rusty a personal round of applause. Charles, I guess they're pointing at you. Brian, would you stand up so they know who you are? All right, and this is Charles Bear. These other fellows can talk a lot smoother than I can. I just go down to my hole every day, and that's where I stay and don't talk to many people. But I, I like what Governor Patton said, is these types of things don't happen by accident. And the nice thing, it's kind of obvious to everybody here, but you know, People outside here, they don't, they don't think a whole lot of us some of the time. But you know, they don't do what we do. Uh, if you look at who's here, the Elliott Company, how, how privileged are we to have the Elliott Company here in our community? They do work everywhere. How privileged are we to have the banks that we have here? We have, we have a lot of good banks. Of course, I'm prejudiced. You know, I think the only bank here is Community Trust, but that's not true. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of good banks here. We've got a lot of, that help our area grow. And the city of Pilot, you know, if you go to somewhere else and try to do this same thing, the red tape and the bureaucracy and the committees and the subcommittees were phenomenal. Now, what do we do here? You know, we cut through all that type of thing. And the hard, I could mention others, you know, Appalachian Wireless. Where do you, what other area has an outfit like that? So you, you go around and look at, you know, Jerry and Danny and all you other folks that have done this hard work. But, you know, these types of people really don't exist very much. And they're getting fewer and fewer. So we got to, got to help our children grow up with the same type of thought process. They have to be taught to be givers, not takers. And so that's how we need to raise our children. And one little thing, every, everybody can contribute. You don't have to contribute money. Some of us can contribute money more than others. Some can't contribute money at all. But there's a lot of things we can do. Burton, I can't swim. Dude. I'm in there with your mother. I, I, I can't swim. I about drowned when I was three years old on Daytona, Daytona Beach. And my mother about beat me trying to get me to swim. But, uh, and it's, it's too late now. 
But I tell you, no kid in, in this area, uh, they don't have any excuse not to learn how to swim. So with that said, thank you for all you do. And I, and I know the hard work that Rusty and Ryan put in for you, and that, that, was, that was good. Thank you again, Colonel. Well, we're running close to time here. I'd like to invite some more people to say some things, but uh, I'm going to run the room. I want to acknowledge the Sash Divas, the Don Harris for all their support, the, the Browns and the Penixes, and the Roars. My partner, Danny Roar, for many, many years, tremendous asset, Dame Sullivan, Dolores Atkins, the first director of the Y. And we've got uh, Senator Rand's representative up here. We'll thank him for all his support, and you particularly. Uh, do you have anything to do with the uh, Todd Brim family there? I, I do. I yes. Do. Uh, <laughs> you're uh, the uh, grandma for the kids. Well, that's wonderful, and we thank you for being that. With that, I want to invite now Shelly Justice Faust to come up and talk about the programs and the future of our fantastic YMCA. Welcome, It's nice to see this half of the room. You guys look a lot cooler than us over there. I um, appreciate your patience, and thank you guys so much for joining us today. It is such a great opportunity and a little unnerving to see so, so many people and their faces not be covered, but it's a great milestone to, to have gone through the last year that we've gone through and be able to celebrate this amazing opportunity for our community in person. And thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, you've heard a little bit from everyone today about the programs that we're offering and what we're endeavoring to do in our community. Jerry spoke about our foundations of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. And we try to teach that in our youth, model it, and coach it in our communities, and bring that forward for all, all people who come through our YMCA doors. Um, Greg spoke a little bit about programs that the YMCA is doing. So this summer we have kicked off safety around water lessons where we will teach children that if they find themselves in bodies of water, how to get themselves out safely. Uh, we started those uh, many weeks ago. Uh, the newest round just started this morning. So this morning I did get to spend, uh, Dr. Webb, I did get to spend an hour in the pool with your wife uh, teaching swim lessons to about 15 youth. Um, and we do those morning and afternoon and we'll be doing those all summer. Uh, great, great opportunities in the community. We do the swim lessons, private and in group lessons. We can teach adults how to swim. I promise you, I can do it. I will take that challenge. Uh, we can teach adults how to swim. We have phenomenal instructors. We're going to be bringing water aerobics indoors. Many of you know about the partnership, as Dr. Webb spoke about, with the university. Uh, they have a university swim team. The YMCA has a swim team now, and we're doing a summer league. Um, our first meet is this Thursday at 7. If you'd like to come out and see the kids and their progress that they've made over the last month, we invite you to come back out and join us. Um, for the future, we do, we do take that challenge to heart to make sure all the kids in our community know how to swim. So we will continue to offer these phenomenal programs, teach them beginning and progressive, and then we will move on. We will move on to strokes and teach them uh, you know, how they can go ahead and start swimming when they're in high school. We have local high schools. I think you can see the banners on the hallway. Belfry um, just completed their first year with a high school swim team. And it's just great things from here. It's a literal springboard. Um, we won't keep you all any longer. Uh, we will progress to the pool deck. Um, so what we'll do is we'll exit out the doors and we'll enter through the family locker rooms. If you are a board member or a donor or uh, with the city of Pikeville, we encourage you to go behind the blocks and we'll go over to the ribbon for the cutting. If you're media or guests, we'll ask you to stand on this side of the pool deck for photos. Yes. Quick question. Yes. Do we still have to make reservations for a lane lap time, or do we just kind of just try to We still have restrictions with COVID about the number of people per square footage for the body of water. So we encourage you to make a reservation, especially during peak times. You can call the front desk, and they can take care of that for you, or we can set up your DAXCO portal, and you can log in and do it yourself. Yeah. Any other questions? Questions was a first. Thank you. All right, I'll turn it back over to Jerry and we'll proceed outside. Let's give Kelly a big round of applause. One thing that's so important is to get news coverage of this. Bill Barrett, hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for all your support. 
but we have, going around the room, you are with. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm with the Appalachian News Express. Express. I'm Corey. I'm with WYMT. WYMT. Joel from Mountaintop Media. Joel from Mountaintop Media. Mountaintop Media. Alex from WPRG. WPRG. We thank you. Let's give them a round of applause for coming. Laurie, I appreciate you coming. Let's move on to the pool and get a tour. And enjoy the refreshments, and thank you for coming. Let's give everybody a one last big round of applause.